NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again. NASA engineers have re-established communication with the Voyager 1 spacecraft at its most distant emissary. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 launched in 1977 for a five-year planetary tour and are still transmitting, now 24 billion kilometers and 21 billion kilometers from Earth adrift beyond the heliopause where the sun's influence ends. In late 2023, Voyager 1's plasma wave detector registered a steady 3 kilohertz tone, the first confirmed hum of interstellar plasma. This is Voyager, our most distant scout, sending data from a realm where one corrupted bit could end the conversation forever. It began with a sound, a low thunder rising over Florida's Cape Canaveral skies on two ordinary days in 1977. Voyager 2 first on August 20th, then Voyager 1 was launched on September 5th. A pair of spacecrafts built by humans, hurtling skyward toward the unknown. Their mission, a five-year tour of the gas giants. But that was never going to be enough. These spacecraft weren't just bundles of metal and wires. They were dream vessels, extensions of human curiosity, our silent ambassadors, carrying golden records and a whisper of Earth's voice into the stars. They were built to survive, but no one dared hope they'd still be speaking to us nearly half a century later. And yet, here we are. Before we go any further, if you've ever looked up at the night sky and wondered what's out there, subscribe to Space Aquarius. We explore the edges of space and the heart of human wonder. As Voyager 1 and 2 left Earth behind, they performed a cosmic ballet among giants. Jupiter came first, immense and swirling with storms larger than entire continents. It wasn't just a planet, it was a revelation. Voyager 1 gave us our first close-up view of Io, one of Jupiter's moons, which wasn't the dead, cratered world scientists had expected. Instead, it was alive, volcanically active, spewing fountains of molten sulfur high into the sky glowing orange and yellow in the cold vacuum of space. These weren't gentle puffs. These were eruptions that soared hundreds of kilometers above the surface, painting Io as one of the most geologically active bodies in the solar system. Then came Europa, a quieter sibling, but no less intriguing. Its surface was smooth and ghostly, crisscrossed with long, dark lines cracked in a frozen lake. Beneath that icy crust, Voyager's data hinted at something astonishing, a vast subsurface ocean an ocean that might, even now, be harboring life in a lightless alien sea. Saturn followed with its iconic rings, rings we thought were singular, but Voyager shattered that illusion. What we once saw as smooth bands resolved into hundreds of tiny, interwoven ringlets, some dense and bright, others thin and dark like ghost trails. Between the rings swirled mysterious spokes and gaps, some shaped by shepherd moons, tiny satellites that danced just outside the rings, their gravity sculpting the delicate ice like a chisel to marble. And then there was Titan, Saturn's largest moon, cloaked in a thick golden haze. It refused to give up its secrets easily, but Voyager's instruments saw something through the smog and discovered an atmosphere thicker than Earth's, mostly made of nitrogen and methane, a chemistry not unlike what our planet may have looked like billions of years ago. From there, Voyager 2 did what no spacecraft had done before or since. It ventured farther, to Uranus and Neptune. Uranus tilted on its side like a rolling ball with a magnetic field that made no sense, a lopsided chaotic loop that broke every model. Neptune, deep blue and wind-lashed, revealed the fastest recorded winds in the solar system, howling at 2400 kilometers per hour. And circling Neptune was Triton, a moon so cold and distant it should have been inert. Instead, it was erupting geysers of nitrogen into the void, leaving dark trails on its icy surface. Then in 1989, the final planetary flyby. After Neptune, the cameras were turned off to conserve power. The mission was complete, or so we thought. But the Voyagers had one more destination. You see, the edge of the solar system isn't a wall. It's not a point on a map. It's a vast, invisible frontier, made not of stone or ice, but of energy, solar wind, magnetism, and radiation. Our sun, like all stars, emits a stream of charged particles that rush outward, creating a protective bubble known as the heliosphere. It's this bubble that shields us from the harshest radiation of interstellar space. Voyager's next task was to find where that bubble ends. This wasn't just astronomy, this was mythology made real. The ancient Greeks imagined the cosmos ending in a boundless river, 
Oceanus, that circled all existence. Voyager was now our Odysseus, pushing beyond the unknown toward that mysterious sea. Voyager 1 reached the termination shock first, the region where the solar wind slows dramatically as it begins to encounter the pressure of interstellar gas. It's like arriving at a shoreline, where the waves begin to break and churn. Beyond that lay the heliosheath, a zone of turbulence, of swirling plasma and tangled magnetic fields. Voyager's instruments recorded something utterly new, a rise in temperature and density. The smooth solar wind was gone, in its place was chaos, and then silence. Not the absence of data, but a waiting, a scientific hush. Voyager drifted onward through the helio sheath for years, like a ship in fog, until one day in August 2012, a sudden change occurred. The probe's plasma wave instrument detected a sharp, 80-fold increase in plasma density. The solar wind had vanished. It wasn't a wall, it wasn't a bang, it was a whisper. The universe saying, you've left home. Voyager 1 had crossed the heliopause, the boundary between the sun's influence and interstellar space. It had entered a place no human-made object had ever been, a region where the light of our star dims and the galaxy begins, and still it sends its whispers back. But here's the twist. When Voyager 1 finally crossed into interstellar space, scientists expected a clear sign. For years, they had predicted that one of the most obvious markers of this crossing would be a sudden shift in the magnetic field, the change from the solar system's magnetic influence to that of the Milky Way. It was supposed to be a clean transition, a sharp boundary, a clear handshake from one magnetic realm to another. But that didn't happen. Voyager 1 found no such shift. The magnetic field direction barely changed at all. That discovery broke the models. It meant the edge of our solar system wasn't clean, wasn't defined. It wasn't a line you could draw on a chart. It was tangled, twisted, turbulent. The heliopause, as it turns out, isn't a sharp well, it's a shifting, murky frontier. The solar system doesn't simply stop and the galaxy begin. The two mix and mingle in unpredictable ways, and this cosmic ambiguity wasn't a fluke. Years later, in November 2018, Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause too. And what it found didn't just confirm Voyager 1's data, it added to the mystery. Voyager 2 measured a similar sudden drop in solar particles and a dramatic increase in galactic ones, marking the boundary. But again, the magnetic field's behavior was strange. It wasn't uniform. It twisted and curved, suggesting that even out here, far beyond the planets, the sun's influence still leaves echoes, like the ripples of a wave long after a boat has passed. But the strangest discovery wasn't visual. It wasn't magnetic. It wasn't even expected. Voyager detected something else. A hum. A cosmic vibration, steady and persistent, emanating from the plasma waves in interstellar space. Like the faint ringing of a wine glass after it's been struck, Voyager began to pick up this low-frequency resonance just beyond the heliopause. It wasn't noise, it was a song, a whisper of the universe's ancient rhythm. This plasma oscillation might be the sound of space itself, a natural background tone of the interstellar medium, and it's still humming, even now. That hum is older than Earth. And despite the staggering distance, 24 billion kilometers and counting, Voyager's signal still reaches us. We catch it using NASA's Deep Space Network, a global array of enormous radio dishes, some as large as football fields, tuned to pick up the faintest flickers of light. Voyager 1 sends a photon, a single particle of light every 30 seconds. That's it. That's the signal, just a whisper in the dark. But what a whisper it is. In May 2022, that whisper faltered. Out of nowhere, Voyager 1 began sending back nonsense telemetry from its orientation system. According to the data, the spacecraft was spinning, tumbling, confused about its position. It claimed it was upside down, but something didn't add up. The antenna was still perfectly pointed at Earth. The signal was still strong, the scientific instruments still working flawlessly. It was as if Voyager was dreaming, murmuring gibberish in its sleep, even while its eyes stayed open. Engineers at NASA were stunned. They spent months diagnosing the problem. Some systems on the craft hadn't been touched in decades. Incredibly, they figured it out. Voyager had begun using a faulty memory chip to report its orientation. They couldn't fix the chip, but they could reroute the commands, so they did. They sent a correction across the void, waited the 22 hours for it to arrive, and Voyager listened. It corrected itself from 23.8 billion kilometers away. Let that sink in. 
We are still troubleshooting, patching, and repairing spacecraft nearly half a century old, operating in a place no human being has ever been, only using faint photons to talk to machines drifting in the dark. And we are still listening. Each Voyager still carries four functioning instruments. They measure magnetic fields, cosmic rays, plasma density, and radio waves. Through them, we're getting real-time data from interstellar space, a place that until now only existed in theory. That data is painting a new picture of the heliosphere. It may not be a neat spherical bubble as we once thought. Instead, it's likely stretched, warped into a teardrop or comet-like shape, twisted by galactic winds and the sun's own magnetic quirks. Voyager is slowly tracing its outline with every kilometer it travels. And then there's more. Voyager is also helping us understand cosmic rays, those mysterious high-energy particles from across the universe. Inside the heliosphere, we're shielded by the solar wind, but outside, Voyager is exposed, and when it crossed the heliopause, the spike in cosmic rays confirmed just how much protection our sun offers. We live in a bubble, a sanctuary in a galaxy of radiation. That's the quiet truth Voyager reveals. We sent it to study others, to reach the stars, but in doing so, it showed us more about ourselves, about our sun, our boundaries, our home. And soon, that home will fall silent. By 2025, the power from Voyager's plutonium cores will dwindle. The RTGs, radioscope thermoelectric generators, are fading. Systems will be turned off one by one. The instruments will go dark, and then, one day, there will be only silence. No more data, no more hum, no more just silence. But even then, their journey won't end. Voyager 1 and 2 will continue coasting through the galaxy, untouched, unchanged, long after Earth has forgotten them. In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will drift near a star in the Carmelo Pardalis constellation. In 296,000 years, Voyager 2 will pass 4.3 light years from Sirius. And if someone, somewhere, someday finds these tiny ships, they'll find a golden record. A time capsule of our songs, our languages, our laughter. A portrait of Earth etched into copper and gold. Maybe that's the real discovery that in the infinite quiet of space, humanity once spoke, and maybe, just maybe, someone will listen. Voyager 1 is headed toward the constellation Ophiuchus, 40,000 years from now. Voyager 2 will pass near Ross 248, a red dwarf star, in about 42,000 years. Long after the Earth has changed or disappeared, these probes will still drift on. And if, by some impossible grace, they're found by alien hands, by future humans, by anything capable of listening, they carry the golden record, a message in a bottle. The message of Beethoven and Chuck Berry, the laughter of a baby, and the sound of a heartbeat. Greetings in 55 languages, a map back to Earth. They might be forgotten here, but out there, they could be the first and only testimony of our species to survive the ages. Because in the end, the Voyagers weren't just about data, they were about perspective. We thought we were exploring the edge of the solar system, but what we really discovered was ourselves. If you've made it this far, you're one of us. Hit that subscribe button for Space Aquarius and join us in chasing the edges of the unknown. There's so much more to come. See you next time.